onto the i5 block. This is an EPP modified block and it has applique pieces in it. So all you really have are these focus fabric pieces and then one big square that you put it on. So I'm just going to base my edges and save that for applique. I have to mark I'm going to have to mark my middles and stuff so that I can place these accurately. I will have to find the middle of each side and then make some kind of an X mark. Or I guess it's a plus sign because it's from middle to middle. So that I can place this properly and then these can be placed properly. Basting these, these inside ones are going to be um, glue basted with notches and then these will be, these outside edges will be gathering stitches. So I will start by basting these. So I got my stuff basted on this inside edge, which I did my glue basting with the notches. So I'm going to set these aside so that then I can gather and stitch the outside edges. And then I take in my square and I found the middles and drawn a very faint pencil line on my fabric. I don't know if you can see that. But I want to make sure that I line up my points with all of those lines. And then I'm going to staple it on there in a couple different spots to make sure that it stays there so I can applique them on. So I've done staples on each side so that I make sure that my piece stays in place as I applique it. I'm going to start in the middle of one of these edges and then I'll tuck my points under as I go and stitch down all of these edges and then I'll be able to then place my little crescent moon shapes after I'm done with that. So I got all my applique done on my piece. I'm going to take out my staples. You just want to be careful when you take out your staples. I, I pry mine up with a pair of scissors but you can use you know a staple remover. I just don't happen to carry one with me. And when you remove your staples, I will push these through and then I will carefully, carefully take them out of my fabric so I don't snag it. So it's just a slow pull and then I got my staples out and then that, those, the holes will steam out or they'll work themselves out after you get your papers out. But once I get my staples out, I'm going to work on my gathering stitches for these crescent pieces. I've got my all right I've got all my pieces gathering stitched and so it's time to place them where they're gonna be. So these points there's paper in there that comes to a point but then there's all this extra. So appliquing this extra is gonna be interesting but I have to find the absolute edge of the paper and put that edge matching with this edge. So I'm gonna place these and then staple them down. Now, I um, right now this is kind of sticking up, but it'll settle down once you applique it down. So I'm gonna put my points exactly where they need to be and then I'm gonna staple it and I'm gonna make sure that it looks even. So even though it's sticking up right here, I can I can do this outside edge and then the inside edge and hopefully get it to calm down. So I'm going to staple these all down and then work on the applique. So I placed my crescent piece and I've got my tip right next to, it's hard to see on here because I got all this extra fabric, but I've got my tip right next to it and I put my staple right here. So my other staple I'm going to put on this side, but i got to make sure that I get my point in the right place. So, and that's when it's going to, it's going to bow a bit. It's going to make this piece, it kind of sticks up. I'll sh let me put it down first and then I'll show you. So I've got, this is going to sit right here and I'm going to put my staple right here. So let me get that done. Okay, so I'm, I've got this down. And then see, it, it does have a tendency to stick up a bit, 
but I can fix that. I'll do my applique on the outside and then I'll do the inside and it should settle down after that. So I have appliqued half of my crescent moons on and what I mean by that is I've gone around the outside of every one of them and then what I've done here and I've sort all of these I've gotten the outsides appliqued on but as you can see the insides I don't have appliqued. Now these two have taken the staples out because the outside edge is, is there. The nice thing about doing it this way is because I have these tags like this, I was able to move it and get the points exactly where they need to be. So that way I don't have to worry about it when I go to finish it and I can tuck the tips of the fabric under and have my point be where it needs to be. Now the reason I took the staples out is because if you look here, this one's a little like way poochy, but if you look here, it's not smooth. Where the staples are down, it's really, you know, it obviously it pushes it down, and so that makes this uneven. But if you take the staples out and then applique it down, that way you're going to have a smoother ease transition. So I'm hoping at least that's the way it works because I haven't actually tested this theory yet. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work on putting the, I'm going to take my thread from where it finished. And I'm just going to run it underneath my piece and then start my applique here and work all the way around from the inside after I take the staples out of the other two pieces. So I went to start doing the applique on the inside of these and I realized as I'm trying to cram all this fabric like I have here underneath this point is that it's virtually impossible. So you need to minimize the amount of fabric as much as physically possible without compromising this point. So I have left as much, let's see if I can show this better, I've left as much material as I can from here to here. So when I cut this, let's see if I can turn this this way, when I cut this one, I'm going to cut, I'm not going to cut this up to this point, but I'm going to cut straight across so that I don't lose this part because when you cut this too short, it'll fray. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut it from this point across without compromising the seam integrity here. So having less fabric here will help me be able to um, cram all this fabric underneath this point better. It's still going to be thick, but at least it be, won't be as thick and it will be manageable. So I'm having some issues with these points primarily because they're so thin. And so what I've done is I've come around here and I've fought with three of these points already. And I wanted to show you what I'm doing because it's not necessarily right, but it's what I'm up to. So what I've done here is because my next stitch is going to be inside this, I've actually come through here and I've put my first stitch on the outside so my thread is on the correct side of this but it's not on the inside because I have to push this fabric down. So I have this is and this is where this stiletto comes in invaluable. And I'm going to do my best to keep this in frame. But um, it's a matter of slowly cramming. I mean, I, and I'm talking cramming. So I, I, the problem though is if you do it on the edge too much, it's going to fray your fabric. So I've had to. I've had to kind of work my way up this point, and I like to fold this over and cram it under here, but this point is so teeny tiny that it's an issue. And if I had to pick, and I'm going to English paper piece this, but if I had my choice of techniques, I think I would come back and do this with foundation paper piecing for this block because of this tiny, tiny point is so tiny that it might work better, although I don't know because of the curved piecing. So I could be full of crap. But from a just a narrow point standpoint, and see, you can see this thing that's fraying already. And so, I mean, I'm just literally just keep cramming this under here. And I want to get it to a point where, see, it comes out all the time. I want to get it to a point where I can get a stitch in there within reason. And I'll show you what I mean. But I'm going to try to keep this. Okay, so this right here, this is my paper. And this is the stuff that belongs underneath. 
So I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to come where my stitch is supposed to be. Okay? Right here. And get that ready to go. And then come back in here and work on this some more. But see, it's getting really, really frayed. So actually, I'm going to try to turn this this way and work on it from this side because I'm right-handed. And I'm just going to kind of feather this in without creating... I'm going to create more drama, of course. But I'm pushing... I have to push... Excuse me. I have to push this forward while I'm pushing this under. And it's really tense on my hands. My scissors are in the way. It's really tense on my hands and it's really a pain in the neck. And this is after I've cut away as much fabric as I dare. And this fabric actually is kind of thick and I'm telling you starching in this situation is not going to help you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, again this is my paper and this is the stuff that's underneath. I'm going to take a stitch on the paper edge right here and that'll help keep that thing underneath but the idea is to not is to get the stitch okay my scissors are in my way bugging me all right and yeah this gets very frustrating but my stitch is now on top of my fabric and so that will help push it underneath but I don't normally like to take it with this much fabric sticking out still but I can help pull it can help pull this this way. Oops. And help pull it this way. And so it's just a matter, especially getting this started when you're starting at the point. But see, I have this all already done. So I have to, as I'm pushing this under, I have to make sure that I don't hit my stitch that I just made. So I'm going to keep working this and getting this under here. And this is a pain in my neck. But if you work it stitch by stitch, eventually, but this is definitely an exercise in patience. And that is not something I'm good at. So again, I'm going to try to come where my stitch is supposed to be and get my background fabric. This is an extreme example. I don't normally have this much fabric sticking out. <sighs> This is probably the worst point I've had in a while. So it's just a matter of getting this under control. And eventually, I don't know how I would do this without a stiletto, though. I really don't. I've tried needles. I've tried pins, actually. And the pins are so thin that they don't work well. So, but as you push this under, you need to keep pulling on your thread. So then, okay, so my stitch is down here, and I gotta come up here and get my stitch. And I keep not putting this in my frame. So I gotta come up here and get my stitch. And you're basically caging the fabric as it gets stuck on everything and it's everything under the sun. And I love this paper piecing thread for this situation too because you can pretty much reef on it quite a bit because it's that polyester core stuff. So then as I go, I'm going to push this between the stitches. I'm going to push this under, but it's starting to become a little bit more under control. And then you keep it under there by rolling your thumb. I'm rolling this up. And so then, even though I have a little bit of fraying there, I'm going to take, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for another stitch here. So I'm going to try to miss this. You don't want to stitch the fabric into the bottom there. But this, I think I can take a whole stitch in one motion now. Whoops. All right, so I'm going to pull this. And then, again, try to get this little bits of extras in here without pulling them, without catching my th stitches. So then it's a matter of, so you can see that I've got 
all this going on but as you get farther down the row and then you want to take this and I'm not getting the paper okay so I'm going to keep this fraying down to a minimum I'm hoping and just keep doing little bits by little bits And like I said, I, every time I've done this with other thread that I've used, I have snapped it every time. And that's like the worst thing to do at this point because you need your thread. But I'll tell you, this paper piecing thread that I found from Coates has been really up to the task. So I've been really happy with it. So that, I'm going to, you know, that's not perfect. It's There's a gap here. But keep in mind that this paper, there's paper in here, there's paper in here, there's paper in here. All that paper is going to be removed. And once it's, once it's out, it's going to relax your fabric because your fabric is like psychotically pulled. And if you picture yourself pulling your cheeks of a smile and going, you know, that's kind of what your fabric's doing right now. So I'm just going to work my way and I do the same thing when I get down here is I work my fabric into the point. So at long last, I'm done with my applique, and then I'm just going to take out my bastings. Um, this is why I do it the way I do, so I can just clip these, and then I pull this knot off, and then I take my stiletto, and I pick the top stitches out. And once all of those are out, I pull on this knot, and my basting comes out. So now keep in mind that this is wrinkly but that's okay because once the papers come out of this and of the back and of this because this has got some dimension to it but that'll even itself out once all the papers come out and it gets quilted so I am now done with my i5 block and I'm gonna move on